August 31st, 2021. After almost 20 years, the United States military presence in Afghanistan ended. But as U.S. troops withdrew, the Taliban stepped up its military activities from seizing the Bagram Air Base to taking control of the capital city of Kabul and presidential palace, forcing Afghan President Ashraf Ghani to flee the country. Thousands of Afghans, including contractors who worked with the U.S. government, whose lives were at risk, foreign nationals, and ordinary citizens desperate to flee the brutal policies of the Taliban, flooded the tarmac at Hamid Karzai International Airport. Watching these scenes from afar in Brooklyn, New York, was an Orthodox rabbi, Moshe Margaretin, the founder of the Tzedek Association, a criminal reform organization. Our organization does lobbying for people who have no voice. First, we worked on criminal justice reform for family members' kids, where their parents is, are in prison, and they have no one to represent them. In the course of his work over the past decade, Rabbi Margaretin has created an extensive network of connections in Congress, all the way to the White House. When Kabul fell to the Taliban in September, Rabbi Margaretin became aware of the plight of the last Jew in the city. People reached out to me that Zebulon Simantov, the last remaining Jew, he is in a great danger to stay in Kabul. If you can please reach out to the State Department or any other politicians to get him out. Through the rabbi's efforts, Simantov made his way to Israel. While he was pulling out all of the stops to make this happen, the situation of the Afghan people, predominantly Muslim, started to tug at the rabbi's heartstrings. I paid more attention what was going on in Afghanistan, and I realized the pain what the people are going through. Rabbi Margaretin was informed by his own experience as the grandchild of Holocaust survivors who fled communist Hungary during the 1956 uprising there. When I learned what the people in Afghanistan are going through, I said, I'm not going to sit idle. I'll step up to the plate. I'll do whatever I can to save as many I can after what I know what my grandparents went through in the Holocaust. As the airport was still open in Kabul, Rabbi Margaretin began working on getting whoever he could out of the country. This was the story, what happened with Sanita's four kids, that they were orphans, the father was killed by the Taliban, the mother was in Albany, New York, and there was no way for small kids to make their way into the airport. So we had people on the ground, and the same we had some politicians in Washington pushing the U.S. Army to help them get in and make sure they're getting on a flight and getting reunited with their mother. The most difficult period for the work Rabbi Margaretin had started in Afghanistan began when the Taliban shut down its international airport. The only way was to get out people by ground to neighboring countries. We had several groups who were getting out high-risk people. We were trying to get out who are the most high-risk I saw an article about a girl with an, her name is Khalida Popal. She was requesting all the soccer players to delete their photos and everything what they had from them because they are in great danger. I reached out to Khalida. I told her that I think I can help her. And she gave me a list of 15 players who were stuck in Kabul. They didn't make their way to Pakistan with the other players. So we, we told her, we need 24 hours, and we got them over the other side of the border. Amazingly, through Rabbi Margaretin's efforts, not only did the girls get out, members of their families were able to join them as well. But with only a 60-day visa allowing them to stay in Pakistan, the pressure was on the rabbi and his team to find a country willing to take them all. So then the good news came, the home office gave permission for those soccer players to come to the UK. Two days before the visa expired, I got a call from Khalida, and she was crying, she was panicking. She told me, Rabbi, I had a promise from someone to pay their flights and all their costs, but he's not coming through. And there's two days left, and I need to come up with tickets 
to get them out from Pakistan. And I told her I'll try to buy the tickets for those players. Tickets for the entire team and their family members would cost tens of thousands of dollars, money the rabbi would need to raise in an almost impossible period of time. That's when an unexpected donor appeared on the scene, Kim Kardashian. We worked on a criminal justice bill before, and I actually saw Kim once in the White House, and I got to know her people. So I reached out to them. I was hoping she'll tell me, Rabbi, I'll give you $20,000. The best case will be she'll tell me I'll give you half. But an hour later, I got a text message that Kim is sponsoring the entire flight. This was great news, and we got them on, on the flight safely, and they arrived to the UK, and this was an amazing news. And now they have a chance to start their life again. They're actually playing against soccer. As Rabbi Margaretten continued to raise money and work behind the scenes to help desperate Afghanis escape from the Taliban, another crisis also caught his attention, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. One day I got a call from a rabbi in Ukraine. He told me there's a lot of elderly and Holocaust survivors in Ukraine. They were not able to jump in a bus or in a car. They all are stuck in their, ho in their home listening to those bombs, bringing them back these horrible memories from the Holocaust. And we need to get ambulances to get them out. So I got someone from our team he, to flew down to Europe, and he is sitting the whole day and looking in all the surrounding countries to see whenever an ambulance gets available for any price, we're buying them as of now. We have bought more than 20 ambulances, and I'm not stopping. I hope to reach even 100. We have an entire big team of almost uh, 40 people driving those ambulances and helping them to get to the border. We are financing the whole operation. We are paying for the ambulances and the whole crew, the, the nurses and doctors, and everything is on our payroll. To Rabbi Moshe Margaretten, whether it's Afghanis trying to escape the Taliban or Holocaust survivors in the Ukraine threatened by the Russian military, the need is the same, to save human lives. He is the personification of the words of the Talmud, proclaiming, if you save one life, it's as if you are saving the entire world. Thank you so much, um, and we are also, me and my family are very happy. I cannot find any words to appreciate you. Uh, I would like to thank you all for the great effort. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Moshe Marvetia. Rabbi Margaret, it is our honor to present you with the Simon Wiesenthal Center's Medal of Valor. As our sages tell us, he who saves a single life it is as if he has saved an entire world. This is, those of you who've been at the banquets of the Simon Wiesenthal Center each year knows the Rabbi Heyer fulfills this task personally. We're his emissaries tonight, and we're with a, a worthy recipient, maybe the first one, who's still in the midst of his life-saving work. But you saw what he's already achieved, and we're a little bit knowledgeable about what he's involved with right now that this is one of our most worthy recipients of the Medal of Valor ever. It's a particular honor 
to give it to Rabbi Margaretten and to hear a few words from him. Thank you. Thank you so much to the Simon Wiesenthal Center. Thank you so much for this incredible honor. I accept this award on behalf of the countless other with whom I have worked in these life-saving rescues. To be clear, I know I'm in Hollywood, and some of you are real-life celebrities. But I want to assure you that this is not a costume from a movie from Moses and the Ten Commandments. <laughs> and I'm not angling for an Oscar on movie or on, or on hairstyling. <laughs> this is really what I wear every single day. <laughs> Truth be told, it's not every day you hear remarks from an ultra-Orthodox Hasidic Jew from Brooklyn, and certainly not at a gala like this. But I think the lesson is that despite our background, no matter our mode of dress, we all share a common bond. We are God's creation, and we are our brother's keeper. This is Tzedek Association's commitment. This is why we worked so hard on criminal justice reform, have been divinely helped to save high-risk individuals from certain death in Afghanistan, have saved and rescued so many innocent civilians caught up by the war in Ukraine. Indeed, we are so proud and humbled that we were able to rescue more than 1,300 people from Afghanistan. <laughs> including female soccer players, female judges, prosecutors, activists, journalists, translators from all walks of life. And recently, we have donated more than 21 ambulances to Ukraine to help Holocaust survivors and cancer patients escape to safety in neighboring countries. I pray that all of us should have the wisdom and courage to act when we can to help our fellow man. As the Talmud says, when you save one life, you save the entire world. Thank you so very much for this incredible honor. Thank you.